is a middle-aged male patient with a large L2, L3 incisional hernia after a complicated appendectomy. The patient also has bilateral inguinal hernias. We prefer a pre-costal ETEP approach for these cases, using initially three trockers. We follow the same known steps of uh, bluntly developing the ipsilateral retromuscular space, performing the crossover, dissecting the preperitoneal space, and then dividing the medial aspect of the contralateral posterior rectus sheath to develop the contralateral retromuscular space. We continue our dissection codally by dividing the medial aspect of uh, both uh, posterior rectus sheath to reach the extra peritoneal space in the pelvis. We take advantage of a small rent in the posterior layer to assess the hernia defect and its content. We continue on the right side, dividing the medial aspect of the posterior rectus sheath to reach the pelvis. A classical bottom-up tar is impossible at this level because peritoneum forms part of the hernia sac. Therefore, tar begins with careful division of the posterior fascia medial to the defect, preserving as much peritoneum as possible while working toward the defect. Once the medial border of the defect is reached, the peritoneum is divided. We aim at preserving as much peritoneum as possible to facilitate posterior closure. Adhesiolysis is then carried out predominantly with cold scissors.
after adhesions are released, dissection of the peritoneum continues on the opposite side, dividing the posterior border of the defect and extending posteriorly and laterally well into the retroperitoneal space. This allows recruitment of sufficient peritoneum for primary closure of the peritoneal defect and ensures adequate posterior extension of the mesh. Here, the transversus abdominis muscle is observed anteriorly. A third 5 mm working port is then added in the left flank. And the retroperitoneal dissection is extended not only posteriorly, but also toward the bogus space. The critical view steps are followed and a canal lipoma is reduced. The left hernia repair is then performed. The peritoneum is closed with absorbable three or barbed sutures placed in a continuous fashion and oriented to minimize suture line tension. The hernia defect is closed transversely using two or absorbable bar sutures in a continuous fashion.
two extra large preformed meshes are placed to cover both malpectinial areas. A pro-grip mesh is used to reinforce the hernia repair. Trocars are removed under direct mission and reinsufflation is performed to confirm hemostasis and complete mesh coverage. This is the patient one week after surgery performing a Valsalva maneuver. Thank you.